Hello. And on behalf of the Archdiocese of San Francisco, welcome to Mosaic. Now, here's an observation. It's not data, maybe, but an anecdote from a layman. When I browse through the self-help section of any bookstore, I seem to see that the preponderance of books offer to help you not with your startup business or your finance or even your self-esteem. They seem to be offering help with your marriage. And second in number to that seems to be the books offering to help you with your parenting. And if that's so, it's not surprising. Marriage and family, the couple vowing their love and fidelity, the home, which is the cradle of human life, and some would say the basis of social life and even civilized life. Do we have an institution more basic and more important than marriage? Do we have any task more difficult, demanding, and challenging than marriage? And do we have any deeper place of joy and love or any arena of life in which we, I, am more exposed to another person or better known to another person? I, with my many defects and, let's hope, with a few virtues to offer as well. The Catholic Church calls marriage a sacrament, a mystery, a vocation, and a sacred obligation. Our guest today is the director of the Office of Marriage and Family Life for the Archdiocese. So stay with us as we talk with him about the Catholic Church's teaching on what marriage is, how best to approach it, and, God willing, how to succeed at it. of the Archdiocese. Welcome to Mosaic. Our guest today is Ed Hopfner. Now, Ed is the director of the Office of Marriage and Family Life at the Archdiocese of San Francisco, a very important office. Ed, you've been with the Archdiocese of San Francisco in this position for... Six years now. For six years. And prior to that, I think in... Five years in the Diocese of Oakland doing very similar work. Okay. Marriage, family life, a lot of yeah. comes under that. Um, and let me ask you, you, you have a couple of master's degrees. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and tell me so what... So I have a master's degree in biochemistry. Okay. I used to teach that at the high school and community college level in Seattle. Okay. And then I have a master's degree in theology with the Dominican School in Berkeley. So Wonderful. I studied with the Dominicans. Right. Yeah, yeah you're, it's very interesting to talk to you. You do have a deep sort of theological understanding of things. Now, I mentioned marriage is our topic, and that's your profession, marriage preparation, marriage resources, marriage help. <laughs> so uh, you explained to me that it's based on the Catholic theology or anthropology or those mixed yeah. together of what marriage is. So h help us understand that. Sure. So to kind of... <clears throat> kind of put it in a nutshell, we start with God, right? And what do we know about God? God is... Okay, I'm going to guess he's love. God is love. All right. And, and not just God is loving, but God literally is love. That's God's inner nature. But we also know from Christian Revelation that God is one, but God is three persons at the same time. It's very interesting. There's no other belief, uh, religion that understands that. Mm -hmm. So I grew up with that as a Catholic schoolboy, and I knew that, and I could pass the tests, and it didn't really mean anything to me. And when I started doing this work, I realized, or it was pointed out to me, that if God is love, God has to be more than one person. There's a relationship. Yeah. How many people do you have to have to have love? Minimum. At least two, At least I would two. say. So then imagine God giving himself, the Father to the Son, through all, cre all, all of eternity, and how dynamic that would be, and the Son giving himself back to the Father, how dynamic that would be. And you know when you're around people that are in love, how, how you can almost feel it, right? Imagine God in love with God. And we actually understand that to be the third person of the Holy Trinity. So God has to be three people, logically speaking, if God is love. So we start with that. And we have this uh, icon. I don't know if, if uh, you can see it on the screen. You know, we do have. We have one slide, which we hope we can bring up here, uh, a famous icon, a Russian icon. You can see it there. Uh, tell us what this is representing. Yeah, just very briefly. So this is uh, considered to be a representation of the icon, Andrei Rublev. You could see three different persons, but if you were able to see closely, you could see they all have the same face. And that's the way the artist shows. There's a, you know, we could do a whole lecture just on the, on the thing. But they're all in positions of deference to each other. The hands are pointed down, the feet are pointed down, and that's the way the artist shows the love between the three of them. And this is the Trinity. This is a represents the Holy Trinity. Oh, the Holy yeah. Trinity. But also the visitors to Abraham's yes, tent to Mamre, at Mamre, yes. whom he fed and who yes. gave him the good news. Huh? Yes. Yeah. So here is the naked... Uh, icon by itself. That's now, if we can see our second shot of the Trinity, this icon altered somewhat. So we have God. We have God who is love and a, tri tr a Trinity of persons. 
And then we read in the very beginning of the Bible, God makes man or the human person in his own image. Well, what does that mean? If we're in the image of God, what are we made for? We're made for... It has to be love. love. We're made to love and to be loved. That's the most fundamental thing you can say about any human person. God is a union of persons, but God is spirit. We're spirit and matter. So how is God going to make a flesh and blood analog of this union and communion of persons in the Holy Trinity? We read again, the very beginning of the Bible, and so God created man in the image of God. He created him. Man and woman. Man and woman. Male and female, he created him. Uh -huh. So in the Trinity, we have difference, we have unity, and we have life-giving love that comes out of that. In the human persons, we have difference, we have unity, the two can become one flesh, and life-giving love comes out of that. This union of man and woman is intended to be an icon of the Trinity. That, that slide we just looked at, Christian marriage is actually intended to point us towards heaven. It's, it's like a preview of coming attractions. It's a little taste of what heaven's going to be like if you live it right. If you don't live it right, it's like the other place. But uh, Well, <laughs> my wife has mentioned that <laughs> on a few occasions. But, um, okay, there's your kind of basis so in theology. It's, it's grand and yeah, it's beautiful. Beautiful. And then we have the fall. We yeah. have sin. And so relationships are not always as beautiful as they should be. Mm. Uh, men and women actually have difficulty with each other sometimes. You, you may have experienced that. I have. <laughs> And so Jesus came to give us the church and give us the sacraments to help us overcome these difficulties. So sacrament is, the best definition I ever heard, is a share of God's inner life. God's life is, God is... He's love. Love. A relationship of relationship love. Relationship of love. So, so this grace from the sacraments gives us the ability to love others in a way we could not on our own. A supernatural ability to love. And we have six sacraments that are ministered by the church and the seventh sacrament, marriage... Is actually ministered by the couple. Now, to me, that's interesting. I don't know if I'm pausing you, but um, I've read upon this lately as well. So the couple ministers the sacrament to one another. They are the agents of the yes. sacrament, not a priest. Not the church. What does the no. priest do? What does the church do? The priest do? is a witness. The priest or deacon is a witness. So there's an official witness of this sacrament taking place. But the minister of the sacrament, the giving of oneself to the other, the, the, the consent to receive that gift and the giving of that gift between the couple... That's done by the couple. Every act of love the couple does for each other is, in a sense, the sacrament. But most particularly when they come together as husband and wife, that's a renewal of their wedding vows. That's a renewal of the sacrament. And most people don't seem to realize that. So. All right, you're saying sexual life in marriage is the renewal of, yeah. of the yeah. wedding vows, of complete gift of self yes. to the other. Yes. So the greatest love in all of human history is Jesus. He gives himself to us freely, fully, to the end, faithfully and fruitfully. And in your wedding day, you vow to love your spouse as Jesus loved. Yeah. I come here freely, I give myself fully till death and life-giving love. I'm open to new life coming out of that. That's wonderful. We're gonna take a pause now okay. and we will talk about that some more and dig much deeper when we come back. Please rejoin us when we talk more about marriage, the sacrament thereof. Okay. Hello and welcome back. We're talking with Ed Hoffner, Director of the Office of Marriage and Family Life, a ministry of the Archdiocese of San Francisco. And Ed, you just described a kind of grand, utterly significant, wonderfully fruitful, yeah. but let's say um, difficult way of life, a vocation that, sure. that we want to undertake. And I think we do, we do want it so badly. We envy those whose, whose marriages look good. You're one of the main pros, uh, projects of your office is marriage preparation. Yeah. So, I mean, what you've described is something that has to be kind of taught, inculcated, and people trained for in a way. I mean, do you have a boot camp, or how do you, <laughs> how do you, how do you tell me how, how to get married and what to do? What's the preparation? So, a lot of the, um, a lot of things we do is, is exactly to do that, to get the couples ready. There are requirements that they need to do. And one of them is this thing called focus, which is a, a pre-marriage inventory. Inventory. The couple, would, uh, the couple would come in and they would respond to 150 statements. Things like, I'm worried about my fiancé's pets. Or my fiancé and I have talked about taking money from our families. You know, all kinds of things. And then they do that separately. They come to us and then we go over that with them to try to... Um, try to uh, 
prevent a lot of surprises, you know, get as many surprises ahead of time as we can. So that's one of the things we do. And let me just coverage. get the administrative sure. thing said. Your diocesan office offers all kinds of resources right. and, and, and personnel and experts, but this happens, this couple's prep happens at the local level, at their parish? Typically or? at the parish level, okay. yeah. Some parishes aren't set up to do that, and so I, I, I work with some of the couples. And then we also have classes on marriage. Um, and we call them marriage preparation. The, the church is actually getting away from that. We're starting to call it formation. Formation, that's Because good. preparation yeah. ends. Yeah. Formation is ongoing, right? Yeah. So just very quickly, my, my dad is a physician. He okay. loses his license if he doesn't keep up. Yeah, my continuing mom a, education. Yeah, my mom's a nurse. He loses her license if she doesn't keep up. I said, yeah. he, he, you know, I'm going with it. Sure. So married couples also need to do ongoing formation. And we've been trying to offer that in the archdiocese more and more. So we have preparation, but also ongoing formation. Okay, now that's a new idea and great. I mean, to me, I did marriage preparation. I'm mm -hmm. not sure that there was formation thereafter. We were sort of on our own, it seems. It's a relatively recent concept huh. for the church. That huh. there, there are dioceses doing that, but it's, it's not something that's all that common. So we do, uh, we have the uh, marriage and family life uh, annual conference. We do women's retreats, we do men's retreats. Um, I even brought the Culture Project in. Yes, tell us about sign. them. So the Culture Project is a group of young missionaries. They're all 22 to 25, somewhere in that age. And we'll have a team of them, for five, uh, of five or six of them, for basically the school year. And they make a one-year commitment, and they go around doing talks on human dignity, what, what, how to support it, what offends it, on social media, how to use it in a way that's, you know... Because they're addressing youth. Yes. Yeah. Primarily youth. Yeah. Youth and young adults. And they do talks on sexual integrity or chastity. Okay. And they live this out. So they're great peer role models. Young people can see them living out this. They're very professional. They're very personal. They're very um, uh, positive in their presentations. Sure. But they can see these young people living out lives of virtue joyfully, which they don't always see in our secular culture. So this is kind of an early part of the marriage preparation before kids are even planning to get married to somebody to start thinking about, gee, if I get in a relationship with somebody, how, how do I want that relationship to be? What do I, is, is it a relationship of giving or a relationship of taking? And that's what we're trying to, to bring up to them. That sounds good. And I mean, it occurs to me afresh that the, what we call the permission of the government to marry is a marriage license. Yeah. So when you say, okay, you, you're licensed now to marry, but you have to get continuing education right. to be good at it. Right. to keep up with it. That sounds really good to me. Yeah. Do, do you have it for the older folks too? Uh, we have it for everybody. I mean, again, this, uh, the, the, not a lot of people take advantage of it. Okay. It's, it's honestly not part of our Catholic mentality. I that find might be. A yeah. lot of our Protestant brothers and sisters do have those programs in their, par in their churches. Yeah. And a, lot of, a lot of Catholics don't. In other words, finding the couples in mid-course and mm -hmm. saying you need to... Yeah. Uh, have an arena structure in which you can communicate sure, here's, truly with each other. Here's, here's a better, you know, to improve your skills of communication right. or just any one of a number of things, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the neat psychological insight someone gave me about marriage is when you choose your spouse, you're kind of choosing to re a person who can help you repair a past bad relationship. Yeah. Say the Harville Hendricks insight about you need to repair what you didn't have with your exactly. parent. And so you see a person who th can do that for you. Father Michael Sweeney has a beautiful quote. He says, marriage is for the healing, perfecting, and exalting of the spouses. Exalting is good. Yeah, isn't that a great quote? That is very good. Yeah. Healing, perfecting, and exalting of the so spouses. Healing, as you said, all the things that we didn't get. Perfecting, because you have a mirror in front of you. You know, I think I'm really a generous guy, right? But when I'm in a relationship, I can see that, man, maybe not so. And then ultimately exalting. I'd say in my experience, it is the frightening thing. I'm a <laughs> reserved person. I keep my, but you're, you're, you're exposed to that other person. Yeah. And, and that person has to, you, you're out there yeah. being known. And that's not entirely attractive. On the one hand, you can see the benefits of it. Hey, she knows me and she cares about me. But on the other, it's like, boy, this is a full-time <laughs> full job. So there's a verse in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 4, I think it's verse 28. No, it's 1 Corinthians 7, verse 28, I believe. St. Paul says, he who marries will have trouble in this life. He says that. And I always tell the couples this, and they look at me like, why are you telling me this? I say, because I get these phone calls. Mr. Hoffner, there's something wrong with our marriage. We've got trouble. And I think, trouble? Marriage? No, it's about right. Because we're not perfect. And when we have this mirror in front of us, we, we see our imperfections. And marriage is a vehicle God uses, if we allow him to, to become better lovers, to, to learn how to love, which is very difficult. That is good, yes. And um, 
We're going to learn more about that. We're going to take a brief break again. And we'll come back with the final segment with our guest, Ed Hopner, on marriage. Hello and welcome back to Mosaic. Ed Hopfner is telling us about the Catholic Church's teaching on marriage. It's deep. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, interesting, very much so. So there's preparation that you offer right. to enter into this state, an understanding of it, and I guess a training for it, to get your license to be married. And then there's formation opportunities after. What do you... I've visited your webpage. Mm -hmm. You have endless resources. Yeah. Um, the various kinds of resources, the various names of these resources, can you highlight a couple of them, things sure. that are important? We have a number of programs. Uh, a couple things that I might mention, uh, there are two people who write a lot about marriage. One is a man named John Gottman, G-O-T-T-M-A-N. I think I have a, a Gottman book. book. Let me... Yeah, he, he did a lot of research in the University of Washington, which okay. is where I'm from in Seattle. And um, he talks about, uh, they said they can predict with 92% accuracy which couples will stay together or not. Observing them for 10 minutes, how their interactions. Couples who come into their lab and yeah, some well, way, after, yeah. after all this work they've done with their lab, they can just okay. watch a couple for five to 10 minutes and say, "This is what." He talks about. I just he talks about these four horsemen of the uh, marriage, uh, four okay. damaging criticism, contempt, uh, defensiveness, yes. and stonewalling. He says any of those would, will will kill a marriage. Okay, and, and he talks about how to overcome them. Gottman studied this professionally, but I think you and I, if we're seeing the couple at the next table in the restaurant. We might also be able to guess just from the way. Sometimes, you know, sometimes, sometimes, you can yeah, do that. Yeah. What's the other um, person you wanted to mention? The other guy I like a lot. His name's Gary Smalley. He's a All Christian right. author, and he's been doing this stuff for years and years and years. And that, that Ready to Wed book is a book that um, I often give to couples. I gave it to my nephew when he got married okay. two weeks ago. Oh, okay. um, but he's been doing Christian marriage ministry for years, so he does marriage preparation, but also ongoing formation. Okay. So both John Gottman and Gary Smalley have websites. One is the Gottman Institute, one is the Smalley Institute. Okay. So it's, it's worth looking at. Those, those are a couple of the resources. That's wonderful. And by the way, it's important because I think I'm correct when I say I browse the bookstore. Shelves and yeah. shelves of how, yeah. to, how yeah. to help your marriage. So someone like you could point out to people, here's the way to go. Here are the books to get. Yeah. And you do that for people. Too. It's helpful. Yeah, a lot of times you do that with the, the engaged couples when they come in. I say, sure. Gee, if you like to read, you know, here's 15 bucks. This could change your life or your marriage. And yeah. they go, oh, that's, that's worth doing. Very nice. So there's reading. There's also... We do that. We have, uh, we're, we're involved in Marriage Encounter, which is a worldwide movement. In yeah. the Archdiocese, we have it in English and Spanish and also okay. Chinese. It's a retreat format. The couple would come in for a retreat. And then there's ongoing optional sessions afterwards if they wish to do that. And... Couples generally really like it. They really find it's uh, typically we say after about five years of marriage, any time after that to come and kind of recharge your marriage. Um, and also we have for couples that are struggling with their marriage, maybe yeah. even think about divorce, we have a, a, a similar form. It's called Retrovi. Yes, right. Okay. Retrovi is a fantastic uh, uh, project program. It's, it's also a weekend retreat where the couples come in and they... You know, they might be sitting like this when they come in. Okay. And the ones that stay for the weekend, typically by the end of the weekend, they're kind of leaning on each other. And they say they have about a 75% success rate of couples staying together if they go through the whole program. And even the ones that divorce um, typically have better working relationships, which is important, especially if you have kids. So yes. that's, those are two really great programs that, Essential. that are offered. Um, so th there's a requirement to do this preparation yeah. for couples who want to be married in the church. Yes. Yeah. So that we do the focus. Uh, we, we encourage them to take a class in, in natural family planning sure. to understand about their fertility. Most, most people don't learn about that. Even, even nurses, I'm finding. It's amazing. Um, and then we, we have the marriage preparation classes offered around the archdiocese. There's also an online program, which I really like, um, catholicmarriageprep.com. Okay. And what it does is when you sign up for it, you and your fiancé would sign up, you would get paired with a couple, and they try to match you up. So if you're an older couple, you would try to match you up with an older couple. Or but you're prepared with, or excuse me, with a trained couple. Oh, you're, com you're matched with a yeah. married they couple. Will work, they will do the who... preparation with you one-on-one -on -one all the way through. And so I like it because it's personalized. Okay. And also because most of our programs are one or two days, and it's hard to go through a day or two and, and, and really incorporate all that into your life. Whereas you do the online, you're going to do it over time. That makes a lot of sense. It gives you time to pull it on. And do you pull meet, does the engaged couple, the prospective 
the couple meet with the married couple personally, or is this all? Uh, typically, it's online. Okay. My friend does this You're... with his wife. They do live. They do the program live in their parish. Okay. They also do it online for other couples in other parishes. His wife says it's, it works better online. You know, I'm, I'm thinking there might be. Uh, it might well be. And do they do Skype or is it? Yeah. What uh, do they, Skype, uh, phone FaceTime, calls. Yeah. So on? That's FaceTime. interesting because we are a digital culture yeah. now. We we're always getting yeah. stuff through those screens, and if, as you say. This can be done over a stretch of right. period. If I have a two-day kind of intensive in the church basement or something, yeah. I could get a false positive reading. Hey, we've really prepared. We know what we're right. doing. Or it becomes but if a you, check the box. Yeah, check the box. But if you have to carry it out and face yeah. it, which I think, if I'm not incorrect, there's a, there's a lengthy period recommended or required yeah. by the Catholic Church before... Six to nine months is recommended. Six to nine months yeah. of an engagement. And yeah. during that time, a you know, structural preparation right. of some kind. Right. So I too have read, you know, sort of statistics here and there. I don't can't quote them, but 80% of people that had good preparation, you know, uh, didn't divorce. Yeah, they have much, much better statistics. It depends on the preparation, okay. of course, but anything you do is going to be helpful. And we have a couple minutes left only. So you wanted to show some, tell us about an event in which you honor couples who have uh, succeeded and endured in their marriages. Yeah. We could run a few slides okay. as Ed tells us about this. This is the mm -hmm. wedding anniversaries mass, an annual event in the Archdiocese. Yeah. Tell us about this. We do this right? every February to honor couples who've been married for 30, 40, 50 or more years. Uh, last year we had 17 couples married 50 years that attended. We had almost two dozen that married over 50 years. Okay. And, and here, the bishop says mass. Yeah, Archbishop the bishop says, says mass. mass. Okay. Uh, we have a, a beautiful little reception afterwards. And uh, yeah, one couple was married 72 years. They brought about 40 people in their family. It was it's beautiful. So look it up. It's every February. It's at the cathedral. It's one of the bishops, usually Archbishop Cordelione. And really, we'd love to invite you to, to attend that next year. And the, anyone is welcome. Here's a couple that I think on, I can't read their name tags, but they may be the 70-year No, no, it was, it was a Hispanic couple. But okay. they're, they're, they're probably only about 40 or 50 years. <laughs> yeah, then a reception in the hall afterward. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a really nice event. And again, I think you started with God, and we're, we're going to end with God here as you are going to Mass, giving thanks to God for your marriage. Yeah. So, Ed, in the last, I don't know, 25 seconds, what is your final message to people interested in being married well? Um, prepare as much as you can. Nobody I know has ever been too prepared for marriage. <laughs> Use all the resources available. There's so many of them. Talk to older couples that have been married, what works for them. Yeah. Yeah. And go and to our website. Be willing to learn. And yes, um, I will uh, second that. Ed's website on the SF Archdiocese website is wonderful, full of all kinds of resources and uh, programs, by the way. There's men's retreats, couples retreats, women's, women's retreats, all kinds, a variety of things yeah. to, you know, improve your marriage and improve your social um, understanding of what yeah. your marriage is all about. So, Ed, thanks very much for joining us, and thank good you, luck John. with your work at the Archdiocese. And thank you very much for joining us on this episode of Mosaic. Thanks very much.